Okay, so we're going to be looking at function and function notation. So we're given a domain. A domain is your x values. So you've got your smallest x value of minus 2 and your largest one of 6. And here it's telling you it's equal to as well, which wouldn't otherwise be obvious. And now we want to write down the range. So you see the word range, you're going to think y values. But because we're in function world, instead of using y, we're going to use f of x. That just means a function of x. It's a fancy way of saying y. So what is your smallest y? It's 0. And your biggest y is 10. So we're bigger than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 10. So now we're going to find f, f of 0, which essentially means we're going to find out if x is 0, what is y? And then whatever the answer is, is 0, what is the y? Okay, so if x is 0, we want to know what this coordinate is. Now, logically, we can have a look at it, and hopefully you can see some symmetry. We've got 2 and 2, so this would be 5. Now, if you didn't see that, no problem at all. You've got two coordinates. You could find the equation of the line. So if we have a look, we've got 10 and 4, it's negative. So we've got minus 5 over 2, which would be my gradient. So we know we've got y minus y1, let's use this coordinate here, equals minus 5 over 2, x minus 2 which would give us y equals minus 5 over 2x plus 5, and you can see you found your plus c to be 5. Now, we now want to find f of 5. So we want to know when x is 5, what is y? Again, you could look at the symmetry, or let's just take some coordinates. So first, if we have a look here, we can see from the question 6, 4 is a coordinate, so that's going to be 4. And the bottom is also 4, so we know our gradient is x. And again, we're going to take that same y minus 0 equals, our gradient is just y equals x, so it's just 1, x minus 2. So we get y equals x minus 2. We're going to substitute our 5 in. So y equals 5 minus 2, which is 3. So f of 5 is 3. So the reason it's only two marks is because you could have seen it and could have subbed it in. But find the equation of the line, you'll find a little bit. It actually is useful for another bit of the graph, another part of the question. Okay, so part C, we're trying to find g to the minus 1. Now this is the inverse. So this is where we're swapping the x's and the y's. So if we rewrite this as y equals, now 5 plus 3x, 5 minus x. Now what I do is because halfway through, sometimes I get confused, am I finding x equals, am I finding y equals? If you've learned it by changing the subject and making x the subject of the formula, by all means do it like that, at this point I swap all the x's and all the y's. The reason being is I don't want to confuse myself halfway through. Okay, we're going to multiply that up. So we're going to get 5x minus xy equals 4 plus 3y. We're going to put all the x's onto one side. Um, sorry, all the y's onto one side and all the x's or anything that's not a y onto the other side. So I've got 5x minus 4 equals xy plus 3y. It's nicer to look at it like this because we want y equals... So I'm going to take y outside the bracket and divide by x plus 3. Now, instead of it being y, this is actually g to the minus 1x. And so we found it. So now we want to solve g of fx equals 16. So g fx is going to be what? So what we're saying here is we want to put f into g. So it's always the second one into the first. And so wherever there's an x in g, we're replacing with f of x. So we get 4 plus 3 f of x equals 5 minus f of x. And that equals 16. 
if I multiply that up, I'm going to get 4 plus 3 f of x equals 5 times 16, so 80 minus 16 f of x. Move all my f of x's on one side, 19 f of x equals 76, so f of x equals 4. So I want to know when y is 4, what is x? Okay, we're already told here when y is 4, x is 6. So my answer to this is simply going to be 